the temple and it's very famous for those of you who haven't been up there for the most wonderful Lichavi sculptures. It's, a, it's an open museum and so what we need to do is to try and establish a program up there that will take full benefit of its site. Now I can stop there, I can just take you very quickly to Mustang. Five minutes. Because Mustang, Upper Mustang, we don't really need to talk too much about space, there's plenty of it around there. But um, the, the, the fact is that it is a walled city. This photograph was taken in 1972 by a French pilot. <coughs> Thanks to Bernadette who's here. Um, she turned up with this one day and it's fascinating to me because we did spend a lot of time up there. And you can see the wall uh, enclosing a very tight, again, a totally pedestrianized area. And um, today, what's happened is that they have lost the public, well, it wasn't public, it was really royal space, but it was a space that was for doing the Kora. Okay? And um, somehow the local community from inside gained sections of land, and uh, they used it for corrals for their, um, uh, their uh, cattle and then they changed um, and then they started building so it's again you know uh, a, a, a real problem inside they have very little space and what we were able to do was to create in Champa which is uh, one of the 15th century um, uh, gompas there this became their meeting hall where anyone and everyone can go and um, this was the great debate as to whether they were going to allow us in I remember but it's a perfect amphitheater and just to whet your attention I know it's nothing to do with public open spaces but um, rather a nice picture and to show us what we have been able to achieve thank you very much for being here. Um, we'll be taking only three questions, so anybody? Only three, it will be very quick. <laughs> Do we have to get kicked out or something? <coughs> so you can shout. <laughs> okay. It's working now. Thank you, John. I just want to say thank you. I know there's a lot of young people in this room. But you took me back to my teenage years, which is great at this age. So when, uh, you know, looking at the river and uh, seeing Swainbu and Hanumandoka, it really brought back pleasant memories. But uh, other than saying thank you, I thought we should revive the Teku Thapthali project again. Because just recently uh, I've been asked to be the greenery consultant, whatever that means, to the Kathmandu Metropolitan City. Oh, yeah. Uh, there, uh, the CEO at the moment is very keen, like our previous mayor, Keshav Stapit. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we should take advantage of this yeah. and, you know, sort of revive. Because that joint, and there's so much work in it, and it's almost like a Bible for me. You know, we've been trying to do little things to try and get mm -hmm. the local communities and get young people. And a uh, question to IMAP, you know, looking at all the old images here, and because we are working on the archiving thing, I mean, is it something that we could use maybe to do more regular interactions with a younger group and to talk about it on that radio program? Um, well, that is exactly what IMAP is hoping to do, because um, we do realize that John Sandy actually asked me when I met him that this was not, you know, done, you know, uh, as a code or anything like that, but that was deeply rooted and it was being followed by the society. Now, in context of this open spaces in hierarchical order, right from Dubai Square to a small market square, how do you think that with the tremendous, you know, migration and the very size of, you know, population, you know, increasing in Kathmandu, uh, how and with tremendous encroachment on these open spaces in prospect, how do you think that the 
escape making of the past and safeguarding of the open spaces of the past could be safeguarded. Well, that's a tough one. But um, I'm a great believer in doing things by example. I feel that uh, there are areas where you've got to be able to prove to the public and to the, um, the municipalities the importance of public open spaces. Now, the, one of the great opportunities would be in Tekutapatali, you see, because, we, you know, the, the theory is being chewed over, the opportunities have been developed, and it's an area that could very easily and relatively cheaply be developed. The only problem is that it's very dependent upon the river. I mean, it's, as I say, it's very nice wandering down there now. But during the, uh, the dry period, during, you know, in the proverbial, as it were, it's a filthy area. But I have taken several times, we've taken um, the odd uh, ambassador along there in these conditions, having said, you know, don't, it's not very pleasant, I'm sure it will switch you off completely, but they're still fascinated by it. <coughs> it's got to work hand in glove with, it's not my best friend, hand in glove with, uh, with the, uh, the re-establishment of the river. Um, and again, you know, why isn't the river full? It's a question I've asked, and you know, talking to the local people, I got an answer. It's very simple. The water is wasted. It comes off the hill. The people in that area will irrigate their fields, and they never actually take the water back into the, into the river. And so therefore, that water is just squandered. So, I mean, again, if one could get someone to, to really think about the source of the Bhagmati and to check that out. Very simple process. Uh, and get the water brought back in a little, a much, it'll have much more uh, water in it during the, the um, dry season. So, another simple project. I know the story goes that when the Malamshi comes in, that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's so much when, when. But, you know, by that time, they'll have skyscrapers all along the river. So would you say that Nepali society has gone into hibernation or dependency? I think it's, uh, they haven't gone into hibernation. They just uh, seem to completely ignore their culture today. And, I mean, I, I was very frightened that I'd have about three people here tonight. And it's really great to see, you know, there was someone I could actually do a bit of preaching to. I hope I haven't preached too much, by the way. But, you know, I feel very strongly. I've been living in Nepal for a long time now, and I do feel very attached to the country. And uh, it's really awakened a new, some, a new drive in me, because, I mean, I've been working up in Mustang, where, again, you know, we managed to succeed up there, with the local community. I mean, I've learned a lot about working with communities. I have a project in Cambodia at the moment where I got fed up with working in, Cam in Angkor because it was totally overrun with, with tourists, two million tourists a <coughs> year in a small space, and it, it's very unpleasant. I then found a site, and I'm working about uh, in the north of Cambodia on a site called Bante Chamar, we have about a hundred tourists a month. Um, and they're about to produce, build a road that's going to come into Bhante Chamar, and, you know, at that moment it's going to break, you know, tourism will come in with a vengeance. We have a little bit of time. We're trying to get the, um, the local community, which is, you know, uh, I think about 20,000, if that, to begin to appreciate that they must save their heritage. And that doesn't mean stop building. It, it's to give them some form of encouragement so that they can make their buck, but they don't spoil it for the future generations. Okay. Uh, I really am very glad to have attended today's lecture by an eminent person, and I congratulate you as well as the organizers who do a very good job of uh, informing us interested people introducing the topic
as well as the speaker through their mails. Uh, and I, I, I noted, you know, you talking about this loss of open spaces, uh, this information talked about various um, factors affecting that. And in that, this absence of will has been cited as uh, one of the reasons. But I, I think, in my thinking, and other factors like in-migration, political stability, these are mm. all usual yeah. things, you know. But this lack of will, I think, is the fundamental yeah. factor. And when we talk of uh, lack of will, I think it's not just the political will of the so-called political leaders who have failed this nation miserably, but also the will of, say, uh, the bureaucratic leaders who are supposed to be intellectuals of the country. And I used to belong as one of the members, having worked for the government for 33 years. Uh, I, I, take, I must take that blame to some extent. So this will of the political leaders, will of the bureaucrats, and I think also the will of the business leaders yeah. of the country, and the will of uh, the professionals, you know. You talked about one of the professionals of the uh, physical planning department building a, building something higher or nearly as high as the Krishna temple. The professionals, the professionals themselves. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the civil society leaders, you know, the, the, we see so many of them claiming as civil society leaders, but not giving enough attention to these things. Mm. So these, speaking of these things, I wonder it will be useful to hear from you, uh, where have these various stakeholders, stakeholders who must have worked for conservation of public spaces, open spaces, where have they failed actually? If you can, you know, the political leaders, the bureaucrats, the professionals, the business leaders, the civil society leaders, you know, they have their respective roles. If you can point to some, to, not any blamatory, but you know, useful well, pointers, <coughs> I think it will be very useful. That is, that's one question. And when, how, we as citizens of Kathmandu, call this, how can we call these various responsible authorities to account for this? Thank you. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you to who I never had heard of until they banged on the door in the office for giving me an opportunity to come and talk. And uh, I hope that uh, you caught a little bit of my passion, let's say, because uh, this has been boiling up over the last week. I just had a week to do. And I feel very strongly that the time is ripe now to tackle the business community, they're the ones that have the money. You know, we tried at the time when, uh, when we were working down there, every now and again I made a half-hearted effort to try and get the program going again. But it's me. And, you know, it's very difficult for just me. I mean, my office, of course, but you've got to build uh, a support group. And I'm hoping very much that, uh, that this is what you're going to do. I mean, it's a good start. You've got a good crowd of people in there. And I think the thing is that to get as much publicity running um, on the positive side, I mean, I hope I haven't been in any way negative today. I've tried very hard to show you what, you know, how I found the Kathmandu 